Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how many people in business are confusing their customers with their business cards. In particular, I'm talking about real estate investors. I was sitting with a client today having an intellectual conversation about what should be on a business card. So I reached into my briefcase and pulled out a stack of business cards that I've received over the past few weeks at various events. I laid out the cards in an array on the table and asked my clients to rate the cards in terms of communicating a clear message to the receiver of the business card. It had to have been about 20 cards in total. I asked my clients to rate the cards simply on the basis of whether they would want to initiate a follow-up phone call purely on the strength of the business card. These cards were chosen totally at random. Out of all the cards, only one of them was for a globally recognized brand. The vice president from Goldman Sachs got a high rating on the clarity of his card, mostly on the strength of the Goldman Sachs brand. Half of the cards had no clear marking of the geographic location of the person or their business. While geographic location of a business isn't as important as it once was, often didn't know even what country the business was located in. One business card said the person was the New York regional manager, but listed New Orleans, Louisiana as the physical address. That was confusing. From there, from there, we saw numerous inconsistencies on the other cards. In some cases, the company name didn't match the domain name for the website, and the email address didn't match the domain name for the company. If your card is using a free email service like Hotmail, you're sending a message to your potential customers that you're not serious about being in business. You're really saying that you can't afford the $6 a month to have a properly hosted email service. Many of the business cards had corporate taglines that were next to the company name. I'm going to share with you some of these taglines, but not the company names. I'm not here to embarrass anyone, but to highlight how confusing some of the taglines can be. It's been said that a confused mind doesn't buy. So if you're confusing your customers at the point of introduction with your business card, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Out of all the cards, only one stood out as being really worth calling back the very next day. The prize goes to a syndication attorney who told the potential customer clearly what they did. It spoke directly to the target customer. The business card said clearly who the target customer was, and it triggered a positive response from the recipient of the card. In some cases, the name of the business clearly states what the business does. One of the common naming conventions for a company is to combine a distinctive term with a descriptive term. For example, Al's Barbershop has the distinctive term Al and the descriptive term Barbershop. And you can tell from the name that Al is probably the owner and that's where you might go to get your haircut. One company simply had a four-letter company name. They were all consonants with no vowels. I'm guessing the four letters had some meaning, but it was really unclear what it might be. It was another card that showed they were involved in capital funds management for healthcare. That card was pretty good. And after that, it got really difficult to figure out what the companies did. The goal for the holder of the card is to say, I need that. Get me more of what's on that card. Here are some examples of taglines that did not pass the clarity test. One company's tagline was the dictionary translation of the company's name from Latin. So the company's name was obscure. And it was so obscure that they needed to give a translation in the company tagline. The translation of the meaning was, to carry away. I still have no idea what the company does. I'm pretty sure they're not a transportation company. One card had no company name and simply had the title, Professional Real Estate Entrepreneur, under the name in big gold letters. That card did not trigger me to call them back right away, if ever. Another card said, Strong Risk Managed Investor Returns as its tagline. And I'm sorry to say, but nobody woke up this morning and said to themselves, wow, that's what's been missing in my life, strong risk managed returns. Another card was divided in half. On the top half, the person listed their software development business. The bottom half was in a different color and it listed their family owned restaurant. When you confuse people about what you do, they choose nothing. My favorite bad business card had the husband's business on one side of the card and the wife's business on the other side. Maybe they were thinking they would save some paper, but it was just confusing. The part that was shocking to me was that out of 20 business cards taken at random, only about a quarter did an effective job of communicating what they do. So take some time today and solicit some honest feedback on your business card. Is it connecting with your target client? 
Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.